My Fijian Voices is proudly produced in partnership with the British High Commission. It's about time. We got to get it. It's about time. We're going to get it. It's about time. We're going to get it. We got to have it. Pacific Harbour in the Seru province is famed for being Fiji's adventure capital. It is home to some popular resorts, shark dive operations, the arts village and most recently, Jimbo's Ice Cream Shop, which serves up tasty quality ice cream products served from within a colourful ice cream shop caravan. Bola Fiji! This is Emma Levavi at Fiji Jimbo's right here in Pacific Harbour and this is my Fiji! My name is Emma Levadi and I hail from the beautiful island of Tavini, um, village of Somosomo and Vasui Weilevu in uh, Sobsavu. So we actually came across from UK after migrating there back in 99 and just recently moved back in 2012 and that's the whole family which includes my father, my mother, my younger sibling, my brother and myself. We definitely had a different upbringing, uh, it's different to obviously the culture and uh, the way of things here in Fiji um, over in the UK but I think we were fortunate enough to always have Fiji as a home that we could always come back and obviously is something that has inspired what uh, you'll be we'll be talking about today with the business with Jimbo's. First things first is uh, we weren't a family that has any expert in business whatsoever at the beginning. Um, for us, I think uh, some of the values that we hold as a family is service to others. So that's kind of what's led into wanting to start up a business, especially to serve others in the community, especially here in Suva, um, over in Suva and now in Pacific Harbour and Navua. Um, but uh, with Dad's, Dad's inspiration, this is his childhood dream, to be honest with you. Um, and we've just kind of followed suit with what he's wanted to do all the time. He wanted to be a pilot. He changed. He wanted to be an architect. Everything that you can imagine that any father or dad would want to be. He, he dreamt of it. But one thing that always stuck out for me that I kept couldn't stop hearing about was starting an ice cream business. So back in the UK, for some, they might have heard that um, uh, Mr. Whippy's ice cream van that would always go around with the chimes and, and the music and stuff. So um, dad had always used that as a, a way to motivate himself to become the first Fijian um, Mr. Whippies, let's say, so aka Jimbo's as you call it now, <laughs> as you see here behind me. But um, for us, it's it's been really uh, inspiring for myself as well, as his eldest and his daughter to see that um, he actually has fulfilled his childhood dream. Obviously, you, you can see the truck, you would have seen it coming in as well. Um, He's a really big advert on climate change, very, very big advert. And I know you're, you'll probably touch on that a little bit too. Um, so to be able to contribute and be a contributor to that fight with um, local government and all these other organisations that are trying to fight against that, especially in a small country as Fiji, um, that's something that's also inspired him to then purchase a um, electrical vehicle that's only powered by yeah, pretty much power at the moment. So um, something for him to be able to contribute to is huge. Uh, personal reasons um, to obviously come from Tavuni, there's a lot of impact that he's seen in terms of the islands, the crops and all that. Um, not only did he want to start a business, but something that will uh, contribute to society and the environment as well. This unique ice cream shop is conveniently located along the Queen's Highway and a song away from the beach. You can choose from a great selection of ice cream flavours including free toppings and sauce. This mobile ice cream shop is popular on the weekends especially with a crowd visiting one of the few picnic beaches along the coast. Well, where do we start? Uh, I think at the end of the day with any business there's always going to be challenges, um, obstacles, barriers that are going to put in, be put in front of you. Um, something that we, like I mentioned a bit earlier on to yourself, is it's been about two years for us to get where we are today. So we originally had the car back um, two years ago uh, that we managed to get it into country through the importation um, from China. And 
Mostly the challenges has been with local authorities and actually getting licenses sorted, businesses, um, documentation and all that. So something that stood out firstly was with um, the preaching of obviously our leaders of today about the fight for climate change and, um, you know, reducing carbon emission and, you know, pollution and stuff. Um, unfortunately, it hasn't, we don't believe it, it had trickled down to the local authorities that actually provide the approval and documentation and licensing and stuff. So uh, that's been something that's been a huge challenge for both my father and my parents um, right from the get go, to be honest with you. And it's, yeah, it's disappointing to obviously see that we're trying to follow through the legal process of everything and go through um, submitting all the proper documentations. Um, so it was very difficult at the beginning to obviously sort all those permits and everything out but then also to find a suitable venue in Suva where we were based there. Um, I think our first first choice was, you know, what better way to start but my Suva Park where you're going to have families there almost all the weekend or during the lunchtime uh, where you'll have the children playing around, you know, we'd see this obviously the, you know, the, enge the engaging truck and the colours and everything would obviously instantly just run in. Um, but again, we were, we were shut down instantly once we tried to set up there um, that we weren't allowed to to sell there spe for specific reasons from the local authorities so yeah that was disappointing and obviously now you see that you know people have become a little bit more innovative and gone and set up in their boots and selling food you know from any car park or any street corner um, it was quite tough to see that they were allowed to be doing that but even though we were trying to follow you know the right process of things we were still getting shut down and told that we couldn't um, so for us um, main product is obviously ice cream so we um, purchased from the two most popular ones so Tucker's ice cream and Tip Top um, we didn't initially think about whether it was, you know, it was going to be competitive between the two um, suppliers but we actually were thinking more of the customers that you know some prefer tip top ice cream some prefer tuckers and we just like to make sure that everyone is um, covered and getting what they want at the end of the day um, so with the ice cream um, we are selling single cones and cup of joys and uh, three scoop tubs at all at very reasonable prices um, obviously understanding with the COVID-19 pandemic we're all going through um, after a a family grog session we discussed obviously um, <laughs> what the prices were going to be like and for us as a small family um, that has also come through struggles too we understand the financial status of things and what's happening in the country right now so we wanted to make sure that balances out with our customers um, when we were pricing our products so very cheap affordable at one dollar a single scoop two dollars a cup of joy and three dollars a three scoop tub now many people will get shocked as wow how how do you even make money or you know continue to build profit uh, yes that's important to us but it's also important that we can um, sustain a good business that is friendly that it's financially affordable and it brings positivity to the community it actually was the reason of why um, uh, Fiji Jimbo's actually started up because there was no other choice there was no other uh, way that we could actually start contributing we had the truck in place um, we had it here we could access the products that we needed to um, and that's how we actually got uh, got everything started so with COVID it was the reason why uh, we ended up moving to the Pacific Harbour and getting it off uh, to a start um, also COVID impacted it impacted us and the business in a positive way because we were actually be able to give something back to the community we will provide those smiles that you know turn those upside down smiles you know to joy and happiness and provide something for the kids um, all the way up to the seniors first and foremost is being able to work with my family I mean <laughs> for a family that likes to travel um, that is you know um, been out you know working outside of the normal uh, family um, uh, kind of orientation that we you know we see in Fiji a lot is everyone's always together having Sundays lunches um, holidays and celebrating with one another we whilst still living in the UK a lot of us were separated and apart most of the time with me doing my travels dad working abroad mum staying you know and, and working from home and brother doing what he usually does being a young lad at the time um, it was really it's really comforting and um, I guess motivating for me to before I start my family to see that a business 
has enabled us to come together and work together at the same time and be able to contribute to providing for our family and growing. So I understand obviously that, you know, when my father pursues something else with his all his ideas that he wants to try another business, um, this is something that would always stay in the family. So it's really good to be able to spend a lot of quality time with family with, you know, selling of the, uh, the product and the business through Jimbo's um, that we can we can have that quality time and continue to share. And I mean, we're going to butt heads. That's normal. That's family at the end of the day, um, have disagreements. But I think for me, it's, you know, having my full time job, but then coming back where I can still contribute to my family in another way by being together and spending quality time to just take the risks at the end of the day, um, not to wait. Something that I think we've become accustomed to is um, being negative in our own ability of things. And we continue to hear the negativity from outside. And then that's something that never sets a platform for us to continue moving forward. So. Like I mentioned, dad has dreamt about this from a very young age and he never gave up. So when this COVID-19 came, he just jumped at the opportunity, understanding the risks that there were um, and given him, even himself being stranded here was, you know, that motivator. So um, again, like I mentioned, there's, you know, there's no point sulking or complaining or waiting for government handouts or, you know, freebies or whatever so that you're waiting for other people to come to you and start it. It's got to come from within yourself to be able to, you know, start that up. So risk or not or no risk, just go with it and start it. The ice cream shop continues to receive positive reviews online that highlights the excellent hygiene levels of the SME, the friendly service and the tasty products. Jimbo's Ice Cream Shop has truly cemented itself as a one-of-a-kind ice cream experience in Fiji and adds to the taste and colourful adventures of Pacific Harbour. Next, we meet Sashi Kiran, the founder of Friend Fiji. Find out about the work she does and more about her successful NGO, only on My Fijian Voices. My Fijian Voices is proudly produced in partnership with the British High Commission. My Fijian Voices is proudly produced in partnership with the British High Commission. My name is Sashi Kiran and this is my Fiji. Located in Tuvu, on the outskirts of Lautoka and down the King's Highway, is Friend Fiji, the foundation for rural integrated enterprises and development, which is a homegrown community development non-governmental organization. The hallmark of Friend's work is the integrated approach it brings into community development, working with communities in rural and underserved regions of Fiji's western, northern and central divisions. This encompasses formal and non-formal settlements and ensures the inclusion of the marginalized members of the community, including those living with disabilities, widows, single parents, orphans and former prisoners. Friend was founded in 2001, post-2000 civil unrest, and we set up our office in 2002, August. So over time, uh, our main focus is alleviation of poverty. So we've been working on socio-economic and health empowerment programs around Fiji. And we normally uh, also very get caught up with disaster response and rehabilitation. So those are the f four key areas that we've been working in. 
I don't know if you can call it an inspiration or you can call it a pain. Uh, 2000 civil unrest was a very painful time for Fiji. And it was also a time when there was an economic downturn, but people were very skilled and had a lot of resources. So that's where I sort of tried to see what could we do at the grassroots level. I was silver base at that time, but I wanted to go in the communities and see how do we assist people to come up uh, in terms of their own livelihoods. But also the 2000 happened because we are racially apart. We live in silos. And I wanted to create a platform where we start to work on the two different ethnic groups to coming together and learning together and building bridges. So those were the two key things that you know, led me to work on formation of the organization. You know, anything you start is not an easy thing, um, especially when nobody around you believes in it. Because a friend was such an abstract idea. It was not about going and setting up a factory, for example. It was, you know, when you say socioeconomic health empowerment programs, it means nothing. Um, so no, most people didn't believe in me. I left my job to start this. Uh, most people were saying, get a job, get a life, you know, get on with, you know, life sort of thing. Um, when I was, you know, running around rural areas trying to figure out how to get a lot of these things. So most people didn't believe in it. And uh, over the course of the years, you'll see most of the things we've been doing are things that have not been done. They're simple, they're basic, they're commonsensical. Re recently, somebody very senior told me when we started, for example, the jams and chutneys and even cassava flour, uh, they said, like, why would anybody buy that? Because everybody makes it at home, you know? So there was so much um, skepticism. There was so much criticism. Um, and that's one of the things that break us right in the beginning, I guess. And of course, and the resources were not there. Even though I was known in donor circle with another organization, I had to set up the organization, run it for five years, show fun, you know, like you have to show that you're not a fly-by-nighter. You can sustain and survive it before anybody else would believe in you and give you the resources. So all the beginnings kind of problems, and that's why now I make sure that when people are starting, I try my best to create enabling spaces and support as much as I can because I did not necessarily have that support in the beginning. So I would work um, for different organizations and I'll use the salary I was getting into paying volunteers to you know, start that sort of thing because I believed in it. Over the years, um, our journey has, so we started with rural uh, communities in Bai and Lotoka and started with livelihood. So in 2003, we had launched the income options of the, the different jars, chutneys and jams that in the market. We had started a rural savings scheme. And I'll tell you when COVID happened, a lot of my staff had much more money in the safe scheme than they had in the FNP of eligibility, for example. Um, so we had this rural savings schemes um, and uh, over the years, we've seen when you go into any village, you, what, one thing that will be very obvious will be the disability due to NCDs, the non-communicable disease, the amputations and all. So in the communities, we've been working with backyard gardens, um, helping with mobility aid, physiotherapy, um, families where toilets are too far and people have to crawl on the ground to get to toilets, so helping them build toilets and things. Um, plus, uh, organic is something we strongly believe in and we've been working on. So for the last more than a decade we've been organic, working on organics and have set up organic communities in, in interior of Ra and interior of Vanualevu. They're certified not only under PGS but you know, under a US uh, standard as well. So, and the, one of the big things I think post TC Evan when we saw a lot of um, homes being destroyed, TC Winston, so we've worked with the communities to help them rebuild. So we look at the statistics and we see how do we intervene in a country with our cultural makeup, you know. Um, so it has to be something that will work in the communities in the long run. Um, so yeah, almost 20 years we've been doing those things. COVID-19, uh, while we had started preparing a staff in February, a month earlier, in knowing that something could happen, we didn't know what will happen, I mean, that it could be this severe. First lockdown happened in Latoka. So while we shut down our office, we realized pretty within a week that people who were casual or hand to mouth or, you know, who did not have, and something that came out very obvious was even though Nandi was a town and Latoka is a city, um, Nandi had much more formal kind of jobs, it seemed, or, you know, initially it seemed. 
And Lotoka, we very quickly, within a week, when economy was not running, we saw people becoming hand to mouth. So within a week, we started mobilizing food packs and uh, NCD medications for people living with diabetes and hypertension who could not reach hospital because it was a COVID active hospital. And then TC Harold hit. So then we had to work with you know, people who were being impacted by disaster as well as uh, impacted economically because of the pandemic. And uh, so we've worked with uh, some of the islands around here, Tuvatu Lele, trying to help them rebuild the 60 plus houses that they were totally destroyed. And uh, when things just kept going, we realized that food bank is a necessity. So we've got a food bank happening in Lotoka and we, in partnership with Fiji Women's Crisis Centre and other NGOs, we set up a COVID um, Alliance Response Centre in Nandi and in partnership with TI Sai Sangam. So there we are doing food bank on a daily basis, as supporting people with food, with seedlings. So in coming months, they have uh, food growing and uh, working on a whole range of income generation options. Um, we've been able to create a lot of cooperations and partnerships with various organizations on the ground between Lotoka and Nandi who are responsive. Uh, also, uh, corporates have uh, joined hands and we've seen an amazing, amazing cooperation and partnerships in, in dealing with the, the pandemic, uh, the different, uh, the crisis that is evolving out of Nandi in particular, though Singatoka and Lotoka are also impacted. Lotoka, we saw things shifted a little bit once the sugar mills opened and we don't know what it'll be like once November hits and sugar mills close down in Lotoka. I suspect Lotoka could be suffering uh, again and parts of Singatoka is quite bad. Um, we're also very concerned about the outer islands of um, Isamas and Mamanudas who are very tourism dependent and other livelihoods have not picked up there. So yeah, so we're doing lots of different things to make sure that we're alleviating the pain of the people and ensuring that they don't go you know, deeper in the doldrums, especially when the minute people were hit and the uncertainties, we've seen a lot of uh, mental health challenges as well as economic and as well as health because when the NCD meds are not available in hospital, people who are earning or the children who are earning could buy it and now they don't have the capacity to do that. It's my heart's calling, I guess. <laughs> so, um, you know, sometimes when things happen, like crisis is evolving now, it's something that your heart calls out that you have to do. And, and I guess not knowing what we're doing half the time, like when, you know, this, this crisis evolve, is evolving and we're having to learn on the job as well. So while we learn from our past experiences and from other researchers, it's also learning from the people on the ground to evolve things. Um, that's, that's, it's, it's a constant challenge and it's constant learning and that keeps you on your toes. Well, Friend uh, was started to try and bring things better for people in terms of love. And it's, it's wonderful to see a lot more entrepreneurship now. Uh, people are forced to look at their skills and resources. I'd like to see Fiji really appreciating uh, all the blessings we've had in terms of we have such beautiful local food, but we're eating bad food and you know causing ourselves diseases. We have beautiful products. I mean, we import sea salt into this country. We import turmeric into this country when our hills are full of turmeric. So appreciating the local products and seeing how on earth do we actually make not only livelihoods, but protect and look after our resources as well. And my dream would be the day um, the different ethnic groups stop living in silos and actually learn to really understand, uh, learn languages, learn culture, and appreciate the diversity. We don't, we cannot become one people overnight. We, but appreciate the hum, humanness in each other and really live like a, the way the world should be. The you know the way Fiji should be showing the path to the world with real, genuine love and harmony. That would be like the ideal dream that nobody from outside, no politician, nobody could come and break us apart because we've, we've, we've hacked it through, through so much bad times and so much good times together that we should not be separated the way we do get each election happens or each time a crisis happens. So like that would be the ultimate dream for Fiji. My name is Sashi Kiran and you are watching my Fijian voices on my TV.
Coming up next, join me in Dawasamu and the home of the famous Black Sands. We meet J Bao from Natale Ra. You're watching My Fijian Voices. My Fijian Voices is proudly produced in partnership with the British High Commission. My Fijian Voices is proudly produced in partnership with the British High Commission. Dawa Samu district in the province of Tailevu is probably one of the least places in Fiji we would think is home to two of the province's popular resorts. When you visit the Ndawa Samu district, you will find two resorts that is located on the northland coast of Tailevu. Takalana Bay and Natale Eco Lodge is nestled by the beach and the attractions, this right here, the famous Black Sands and out there, the spinner dolphins that live in Munri. Bula! My name is Njembao, manager of Natale Ecolodge, and this is my Fiji. Natale Ecolodge uh, is uh, a tourism uh, uh, based uh, business which was uh, uh, run as a cooperative uh, uh, structure and uh, every villages they have a uh, shareholder and uh, every end of the financial year they get dividends uh, out of the Natale Ecolans. Eh? I think uh, we want the benefits or all the profits that derive from the business to help the villages. Eh? especially in uh, developing the village. Uh, there are a few other generating income in the village and they don't have the capitals. So uh, Natalia Eklodz was uh, started to, to be a commercial arm of the village. Eh? When I started here at Natalia Eklodz, the product here was not ready. We just uh, come over Cyclone Winston and the, all the buries were severely damaged and uh, we take a lot of time just to repair and cleaning the debris before we plan out what is the real plan for Natale before we draw it out, we design uh, what we're going to do in the five years when the visitors come to Natale we offer them the natural resources around here like uh, we take them to Moon Reef at Moon Reef is about 15-20 uh, minutes from here about 7 kilometers away not from here and it's a uh, resting habitats for the spinner dolphins early in the morning about uh, 68 o'clock these pods of wild dolphins they come inside the reef and they hangs out in the reef mothers feed the babies and uh and uh, it's uh, like 100 percent guarantee you can see them every day so that's one of our main attraction and also moon reef is uh, recently declared as a marine protected areas and uh, we also take our guests to snorkeling uh, out there to explore those uh, beautiful pristine marine life at Moon Reef. And uh, when we come back from the reef, we also offer them a hike to Mount Toba or just a trek up to the waterfall. Eh? There is a 20 minutes trekking to the waterfall and along uh, the journey to the waterfall, uh, some of our crazy medicine men can teach them how to show them some herbal medicine uh, that uh, we can uh, uh, use it. They can uh, send us on an email at uh, natalieecolodes at 
fg at, gm at gmail.com or they can call us on uh, 9916338 or we also have our social media page on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Natale Eco Lodge relies heavily on the environment surrounding the village including the land it is built on. Fresh supplies of fruits, vegetables and root crops are sourced from their gardens and plantations while the sea provides them with fresh seafood. We preserve uh, environment from uh, ridge to reef. Before the COVID-19 we used to have uh, groups of students that uh, they come and do their Fiji expedition project here and they stay for two weeks and uh, we have a couple of uh, groups from uh, ANU, Australian National University, University of Science and Coast and uh, these are students when they come every year and they repeat the same uh, uh, project that they're doing. Eh? Some uh, research work at Moon Reef and also up on the, the mountains and the riverside. Eh? We have about four or five groups that usually come and stay for two weeks and uh, while they're doing that at the end of uh, their trip, they usually collect all those data and they gave, gave it to us. Eh? The, the data that they collect from the reef during uh, our Boseni Tikin or during the village meeting, we usually explain to our chief or our elders what is in the reef. And uh, maybe if they want to develop it in the future, we are, they are very well aware or very well educated about the environment. Eh? And uh, th th all those data we just collected from all the previous students that came here to do study and do research. While we were here, they also paying for their accommodation, their meals, they're going out to the reef. So, so it's a win-win situation. We lost about 90% of our booking this year. And uh, all our uh, groups that was confirmed uh, in 2019 that uh, we were supposed to host them uh, this year, they all, they all cancelled due to this uh, pandemic eh? and uh, especially just beginning of the year we started uh, just build up our conference room and uh, we started building up a few of our buildings up and it's all halfway and it stopped uh, it's, uh, we were expecting uh, uh, our sales to come from like this uh, heavy booking this year but uh, unfortunately COVID-19 uh, started eh? and with uh, poor post every all the, our project I think I like doing what I'm doing because uh, first of all I'm passionate about the ocean and I, if I went to Moon Reef uh, three times a day or go to the reef seven days a week I never get bored of watching the reef, watching the dolphins that's why I like what I'm doing We just learn to go with, with the flow and uh, go slow and uh, uh, you can rush or you can uh, uh, I have uh, that uh, big plans that you have to have it before, so I just go with the timing. And uh, we're so blessed that uh, every weekend uh, we have uh, guests from uh, Suva that uh, comes out and uh, join the dolphin watching and also staying overnight, eh? keeping us busy on the weekend. Even though we're very quiet on the weekdays, but we're still happy that we're doing good on the weekends. Uh, in five years from now, uh, we think uh, we should be getting, getting back on our feet and uh, we should be uh, have all our mbures up, all our uh, uh, the amenities and the facilities here should be changed and more advanced. Bula, I'm Jembao and you're watching my Fish and Voices on my TV. Thank you for watching our show. I hope you enjoyed meeting Emma Levadi from Jimbo's Ice Cream in Pacific Harbor, Sasha Kiran from Friend, and Jay Bao from Nataleira. Now get in touch with me if you also know of someone that has an inspiring story that we can share on our platform. You can message me via my TV Facebook page. Now don't forget to like this video and share it with your family and friends. I'm Andy Blake. This is my Fijian Voices. Nisama de Manda. My Fijian Voices.
My Fijian Voices is proudly produced in partnership with the British High Commission.